What up, John in the middle here. Uh, another art critique. Uh, another Kehinde Wiley. I wanted to show you guys that I own the book just so you know that I am a fan of the actual work before I engage in this critique. <laughs> that said, let's start with The Princess Victory of Sax, Coburg Gotha, Quincy Flowers. I mean, obviously it's gorgeous. It's so well done. From the leaves, the depth of the depth of field, as we see that the leaves are layered, the flowers that provide beautiful pops of color and therefore balance throughout the whole composition. The, the fabric is done so well. I love that you can see the, the, the waistband through the back garment draping from her shoulders. Aesthetically, it's very pleasing, it's beautiful. No argument. Here's the thing. And I find this to be a theme with a lot of Kehinde's work is the, the references of European models. And I gotta be clear, it's not my place to tell any artist or suggest to any artist what they should or shouldn't make, how they should or shouldn't make. That's up to the creative. At the same time, I'm of the opinion that black art has an opportunity to help black people. And if black art or what's considered to be the best of black art or what's considered to be an example of excellence within the realm of black art is referencing European art, then what's the message? As it pertains to this piece, all I can think is that it's a missed opportunity. We see this beautiful black woman and her shoulder and her arms and the back of her neck and the side of her face, but we don't see her face. The audience doesn't get to enjoy a beautiful black woman portrayed in art in this piece, simply because the reference art, the reference European art, is one where the female figure has her back turned to the artist. And it's in moments like that where I go, is the artist considerate of the potential impact on the audience or the potential impact on the muse? The impact that can be had on the muse. When I was a kid and I'd look for art that reflected me. It's very hard to find. So that so when I see a piece of beautiful black art that's referencing European art, I just think of myself as a kid wanting to see reflections of me that are clear and decisive and prioritize what was best for me to see as a black kid. And it's, it's, for me, it's, it's a missed opportunity here. And it's a theme that comes up in the work a lot. More on that later. Out of five, two and a half, two and a half out of five, 2.5 out of five. I gotta be honest, it, it makes me wonder if we're good enough. It makes me wonder if we are worthy. It makes me wonder if we're worthy as black people with black culture of African descent to be prioritized in art from people that look like us. Would black people be asking too much to be prioritized? Not only in the way a piece looks when we meet it, but from conception, from beginning to end. I just, I don't understand the priority. It's 2021, why are we still prioritizing European art? And I think the answer to that question is because the institutions and organizations that have any chance to give creatives of any color opportunities and resources are all Eurocentric. 
for the most part. And that's not a good or a bad thing, but it is to say the thoughts and opinions and priorities of white run arts institutions ultimately become the thoughts and opinions of black artists. It just so happens that most, if not all of these institutions have no reason to prioritize what's best for black people. And as a result, neither do most black creatives. Next piece, femme pick par un serpent, serpent. Um, very well done. Gehende is a master renderer. This piece as a portrait is masterful, beautiful. The flowers in the background are, are so well done and highly articulated. I love the pattern in the shoes, the way that the pants reflect light. The, uh, the veins in the hands, everything is well articulated. But again, I wonder what the messaging is. This is another instance where the reference art is a piece of French art by August Slinger, 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 I don't know. And I'm not embarrassed that I don't know. And as a sculpture, as a piece of reference art, it's beautiful. But again, I wonder what the messaging is. And furthermore, I wonder how could this have helped black people? One of the questions that I have for black art in general, and one of the questions that I'm constantly posing for myself in my own arts practice and my own work is how can black art help black people from providing images that it would benefit us to see to referencing aspects of our history that most of us may be unaware of to introducing innovations and inventions to society, to asking questions like where are we from and what have we been through as black people and where we're going. I always ask myself and black art in general, how can black art help black people? And though asking that question leads me to ask the question like, how does this help us? And furthermore, again, is the artist considerate of how this work can help us or how this work reaches us, right? Like it's up to the artist what they make, more power to you at the same time. There's nothing wrong with this painting. There's nothing wrong with this subject matter. I just wonder what the message is that's being sent if the reference art is constantly European art. If the muse for a lot of this work from Kehinde Wiley is black men. And in a perfect world, an artist finds a way to, re and in a perfect world, artists are constantly returning and replenishing the muse that they borrow from. How can Kehende's work replenish the black male muse as opposed to just using it and applying it to European references? And does he care to? I get the, and I, I just get the vibe that it's not considered just in general, like, is the question, how can this help black people being asked? Or are we simply expressing whatever we want to express? Which is fine. What is the intended message to me? And why does this message always have a European reference? And when I when I when I ask myself that question, I think the answer that are I think the answer that are the example 
black art, black artists have not been given a reason to not prioritize European art. That's what it is. Black artists have not been given a reason to not prioritize European art and instead to prioritize what is best for black people to see, to experience, to become literate in, to understand, to comprehend. While I'm not completely sure why any artist does anything, I do think there's something to be said about the constant application of black bodies to European art that already exists. Like, I, I, I just think part of, my, part of the, the issue for me is we have so much talent and ability and vision and because we're not thinking about how this can be applied to help people, this being art, right? Because we're not thinking about art the same way a lot of the figures from the Harlem Renaissance were thinking about black art and addressing our issues and asking questions about where we've been and where we're going and what we've experienced in the South and what we've experienced in moving to Northern cities like Harlem, New York City. Those questions that were being asked in the mid 1920s during the Harlem Renaissance were questions that were relevant during the Harlem Renaissance were questions. And they made for timeless works of American art, American literature, American paintings from the likes of Romare Bearden to, to, to sculptors like Augusta Savage and Selma Burke to prolific writers like Zora Neale Hurston and Alan Locke and James Weldon Johnson and W.E.B. Du Bois and Marcus Garvey. All of these people that were asking questions that made sense for black people to ask about our culture. And this work is such a far cry from that for me, in my opinion, because It just, it, it dodges an opportunity to champion us, to champion us. And I don't even know that it is the intent of Kehinde Wiley's work to deify European art or European culture as much as it might be an attempt to appease European art when your model of success is one that was created without you or your people or what's best for your people in mind and the group that you come from does not have their own arts institutions you have to entertain the priorities the thoughts and opinions of the institutions that can potentially help you, can potentially buy your work. The patrons that have the resources to pay for your works. Whatever they like, whatever they're into, you gotta go with. And whatever they're not interested in, whatever they don't have um, stake in, they're not as interested in. And if black people are not controlling their own arts institutions, if black people don't have their own independently run arts institutions, then who then then who will be available then who will be available to patronize black art that prioritizes black people and what's best for black people? The pro what's best for black people arts organizations and the black owned arts institutions that can and will patronize black art that prioritizes black people as opposed to prioritizes Eurocentric art in the interest of appeasing a Eurocentric art world in the interest of gaining patronage and access. It makes total sense. It just don't help nobody.
black body, particularly black male body, applied to European art that already exists? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not really feeling it. And that doesn't mean that the work doesn't look good. I just wonder how can this have helped us, specifically us? And furthermore, again, is the artist thinking about how this work can help black people or are we an afterthought? Is the muse for all of this work an afterthought? Is all you wanted the black face? Is that, was that it? Femme pick par un serpent. Two out of five. Officer of the Hossers. Another European inspired work of art. Inspired by Theodore Guéacol, French painter. The painting, Officer of the Imperial Guard on Horseback. Look, no one's gonna say it doesn't look good. Look, no, all of these paintings are masterfully rendered. The aesthetically pleasing and beautiful, robust and rich in color and composition. Uh, the movement in the piece, the aggression of the horse, the way that the horse meets the land and they kind of bleed one into the other. The art, the articulation of the muscles in the arm, the facial expression, everything's great visually. But again, what is the impact of these images? What is the relevance of these references being European art? And why should Kehinde care to prioritize black culture as opposed to European art that already exists? One reason being black art and culture does not exist at the same rate as the European art being referenced in these pieces. And that's not Kehinde or any artist's responsibility to make sure there's enough black art at the same rate as European art. However, if you were to use your talent and your gift and your perspective to contribute to anything that helps black people, why not start with art? That's, that's just the way I think. I think his work is so beautiful that we forget, like, we forget to ask ourselves, why are these references all European art? And was it Wiley's intention to prioritize intention in art, or is this political? Within his practice over the years, has this been a method to appease European art standards, a Eurocentric art world? Does this lead to a bigger question about what is deemed successful and acceptable in the art world? Could it be that artwork that champions European art that already exists from several dozen European artists that are considered to be masters? Could it be that if your work is in relationship to those artists and those works of art, you might be taken more seriously? Could it be that if you're a black artist that prioritizes what's best for black people in the content of your artwork, could it be that, could that be perceived as challenging? Could that be perceived as disrespectful? Could it be perceived as ignorant? Why is it that European art seemingly has to be championed or validated or spoken to with black art for black art to be taken seriously or patronized at the same rate? I don't know why Kehinde keeps using all these European references. I'll be honest, I, and I, I'm not really into it. I don't fuck with that, especially when someone so talented could be using all of that talent to champion images that benefit us to see and experience without the influence of European art that is ever present in the art world anyway. Officer of Hussars, three out of five. Kehinde's work is masterful, beautiful and timeless. The paintings are clearly well rendered 
and beautiful reflections of everyday black life. Black people can benefit from the arts provided that black creatives are returning and replenishing to the muse that is black culture. And if we're busy prioritizing European art and simply coloring it with a black face, we just might find that that art doesn't help or resonate with most black people past how it looks. Beautiful work, but what is the impact? And what can the impact be? And how do we get to a place in the arts where black art and BIPOC art that can help people, that can bridge a gap between people and culture, that can facilitate understanding, that champions our nature. When the world tells us that we look wrong, our hair is wrong, the way that we talk is wrong, the size of our lips is wrong, the size of our nose is wrong, the color of our skin is wrong, the way that we communicate with each other is wrong, the way that we make art is wrong. When the world is telling us everything about us is wrong, who will patronize the black art, the BIPOC art, that tells us everything about us is right and natural and true and amazing before it prioritizes European art that already exists? That is the art that for me gets a five out of five. Kehinde Wiley, amazing work. I'd love for Wiley to be more considerate of the potential impact of his work on the muse that he consistently borrows from. And I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. Please. For real stuff. <laughs>